Welcome to Louisiana Live, the statewide meeting place for newsmakers and you. If you'd like to take part in today's program, pick up the phone, dial us toll free. Our number is 1-800-673-5555. Once again, that toll free number, 800-673-5555. Now here's your host, Jeff Palermo. And thanks a lot, Ricky Stockner. Good afternoon, Louisiana. As we're about ready to talk Saints football, and I'm sure we'll dive a little bit more into the cell abrasion, as some may call it, Joe Horn's uh, unique way to celebrate, scoring the second of your four touchdowns on the night. We can take your calls on that. It's a big, hot topic. Heck, it's getting play on CNN. Everybody's talking about it. Do you think it was selfish, or do you think it was funny? I think it was pretty funny. It gave, you know, Sunday's game was a, a team now. Granted, the Saints still have playoff hopes, but Sunday's game was just a meaningless game in December, and Joe Horn brought a lot of attention to the New Orleans Saints. You might call it bad attention, but, hey, they, they beat up on a New York Giant team, winning 45-7. to So this hour we're going to talk to our resident Saints expert, William Taylor, as uh, he will give us his comments and thoughts on the situation. 1-800-673-5555 if we want to hear from you. And joining us now is William Taylor. And like I was saying, William, you know, my initial reaction when I saw it, I thought it was pretty funny. And uh, granted, I, I think I would have probably thought it was maybe more, I don't know if it's ever appropriate, but I thought, you know, hey, this I guess part of me says, you know, maybe a team that's 7-7, seven and seven, a guy that dropped a touchdown pass a week before, maybe he shouldn't be thinking these kind of things. But obviously Joe Horn was in a good mood. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I thought it was, it was quite entertaining. I don't have a problem with these elaborate touchdown celebrations. I have a problem when after a, a five-yard out you get a first down and you act like you – you know, just won a million dollars. I don't have a, I, I have a problem with that. But hey, when you score a touchdown and you're playing a meaningless game in December, why don't you add a little spice to it? And I think that's what he did, William. Well, uh, uh, Jeff, please don't fine or suspend me. I have to call you by cell phone right now. That's all. <laughs> okay. Well, let me know if Joe Horn has got to call you. Well, if it gets worse, I'll get suspended by Grizzly Smith for 30 <laughs> days. So, but uh, listen, I, I told somebody yesterday. In principle, no. I really didn't have a problem with what he did because of, uh, well, first of all, Joel's always been a bit of a show-off. That right. should be a surprise to anybody. But this was my concern, is that the NFL, especially since the late 90s, has cracked down on what they determined is, um, as a, a, a prearranged celebrations, especially that involve foreign objects. You know, in the late 90s, the NFL's big kick was to ban the throat slash symbol. Willie right. Whitehead once got fined for that. Well, Earlier this year, Joe Horn got fined and, for, and penalized for doing the machine gun dance in Atlanta. And uh, in this case, I, and this is just my opinion, if he would have not used the cell phone, if he would have done what we used to call the phone signal with your hand, where you put your thumb to your ear and, the, and your pinky right. finger to your mouth, I don't think nothing would have become of it. But because he brought on a foreign object, it's the real reason why he was fined. And it, the league looks, that, looks at that upon as a, as a self-promotion, possibly to get an endorsement down the road. And so, really, that's why I was disappointed, because I know the way the NFL thinks. The officials saw that foreign object. And even worse, I knew when they saw it that they were going to throw the 15-yard penalty against them. And unfortunately, it put the special teams and the defense in a bad situation, and it could have been worse if it was a much closer game. Mm -hmm. but that was the only thing I was upset is that he brought on a foreign object because I knew that was going to draw the officials' ire. Well, it was kind of funny watching the officials, and I was in the press box watching the game. It almost seemed like, you know, they had a long conversation. They huddled about it. It almost seemed like, well, guys, what do we call here? Was that – you know, I think they really questioned whether – what you know whether it took them a long time to throw a flag i kind of wonder if they even thought that that was necessarily unsportsmanlike conduct i don't think that is i i mean if he walked by the giants uh, sideline and was on his cell phone but he's walking back to the he's just entertaining the 60,000 fans that paid 50 or so dollars to watch that game watch a brutal game between two football teams that 
might not even finish with a winning record, and he brings a little excitement to it. Well, I actually think more than that. I really think that even though earlier in the week, according to Peter Finney of the Times, Picayune, uh, someone asked Joe Horn if he got up anymore uh, for these nationally televised games, and he said, no, not me. Uh, I think he did it because it was on national television, mm-hmm. just like Terrell Owens waited to do his Sharpie thing on Monday Night Football. Yeah. And I think this was all predetermined a long time ago that Joe was, Joe was going to do this, especially if the Saints had the lead at that point. And uh, I know Joe Theismann was really upset about it. He even suggested that this could possibly cost Joe Horn a Pro Bowl berth because this is the week that both the players and coaches uh-huh. vote for the Pro Bowl. Whether or not that's going to happen, we'll wait and see. But uh, I don't blame Joe Theismann for being upset because, hey, knowing the way the league thinks and the way the officials think today, that, uh, you, you know, that stuff like that is going to draw a penalty, like I said, mainly but only because of, of foreign objects being brought in with it. Look at Chad Johnson. But, but let me ask you this. Okay, Joel Theismann is upset. Wasn't he part of the Fun Bunch gang? Uh, well, he was on that team, but he wasn't part of it. Well, still, I mean, if he was so upset about it then, why didn't he tell his players to stop it if he's, quote, unquote, the leader of that team, as any quarterback would be? Well, you know, I think that's a little bit hypocritical for Joel Theismann to be up there saying that. Let's get Joe on the <laughs> <laughs> I think Joe Horn's got his number. You know, I, I just – and that's what I'm hearing. I hear a lot of hypocritical stuff, you know? And I hear people say that, well, Bill Parcells want to do that. That's not – now, Bill Parcells apparently allowed Lawrence Taylor to be calling call girls and doing drugs and stuff. We'll be back after this. You can only find gifts like these on the Holiday Gift Network. Girl, you gonna get caught watching TV at work? It's the Holiday Let's Gift Network. I'm trying to find the perfect oh, gift for Mr. Ross. It's a voice-activated hammer. Just say hammer, and it takes off. Whoa! Look out! Look out, Charlie! Hey, maybe that's not it. What do you get in the box? How about a chance to win up to fifty thousand dollars? Fifty thousand dollars? Where are you gonna find a gift like that? At any Louisiana lottery retailer. Ask for the Holiday Scratch Off. Introducing the Holiday Scratch-Offs from the Louisiana Lottery. Cool winning. Holly 100 Stripler and Holiday Cash. You could win up to $100, $10,000, or even $50,000. And with cool winning, 70% of your money comes back in prizes. Pick up all three at your lottery retailer today. Great holiday gifts. And what man wouldn't want this remote control lawnmower? Just hit this button and... How do you make it turn? Watch out, the cable! I think I saw the lottery holiday scratch off. As for cool winnings, Holly 100 Stripler and Holiday Cash today. Must be at least 21 to purchase. Season's greetings from the administration, faculty, and staff of the LSU Ag Center. Our experts have advice to make your holidays happy and less stressful. Whether you are looking for information on caring for a tree cooking the perfect holiday meal, or saving money in the new year, you can find it here. Visit www.lsuagcenter.com or contact your local extension office to get the advice you need. Radio Ovaltine's on the air with the Ovaltine song. Ovaltine hot, kids like it a lot. Red chocolate Ovaltine, it hits the spot. Creamy and delicious, may I say nutritious, Taste just like dessert. Now, Jason, it's time to jump. Ovaltine hot, kids like it a lot. Rich chocolate Ovaltine hits the spot, man. Creamy and delicious, and may I say nutritious, it tastes just like dessert. Rayo Ovaltine signing off. Later. Hey, welcome back to Louisiana Live, 1-800-673-5555, if you want to jump in on the Joe Horn discussion. My thought is, hey, it's uh, purely entertainment, and I I really think there's a lot of people out there that have blown this thing way out of proportion. Should he get fined? Yeah, I guess so, because he he had a, as you said, William, I guess a foreign object out on the field, I guess. I don't know. But I mean, look, I, I told somebody from the get-go, I, I didn't have a problem with it until I saw the cell phone come out, yeah. and that's when I knew a penalty was going to get thrown. Uh, it's uh, like I was trying to mention earlier, Chad Johnson, he's going to get fined again because after he scored a touchdown in Cincinnati's win over San Francisco, he got out an orange poster, <laughs> held it up to the camera that said, please, NFL, don't find me again. And, of course, he probably will be. Right. And while I think that son was uh, that sign was blatantly done in jest, I mean, you know, the NFL is a rather stuffy organization, and you know, they're just uh, if you even remotely look at them funny, they'll probably find you a few bucks. But why is the NFL like that? Well, uh, it's control. 
I mean, don't get me wrong. These players are making a lot of money. Well, uh, some of them are making a lot of money, and I'm hopefully deep down inside they're thankful they're making that. But I think what it is, the NFL has historically, long before free agency came in, that they wanted everybody to go to have the same kind of image. And they've always had a problem with radical, what they dub as radicals, whether it's people that have long hair, people who speak their mind and mm-hmm. criticize the establishment. You know, uh, the, you know, they just love to throw the hammer down on people, and uh, Commissioner Tagliabue is simply an extension of the old line regime because for many years he was a lawyer for the league uh, when Mr. Roselle was there. So uh, it, all it is, it's a matter of control. They figured, well, if we find players enough, maybe they'll shut up. In a lot of cases, they make so much money that, hey, paying the fines, no big whoop. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think uh... – Despite maybe the fine and all that, I just think it, there's been a lot of talk about it. Uh, I mean, Joe Horn had a, a 10 minute interview last night with Dan Patrick of ESPN. <laughs> it was quite humorous, I thought. Uh, you know, I, I just think I, I respect what Joe does on the field. I think if there's one or two guys on this team in a, in a, in a dreadful year for the Saints with high hopes for many of the fans, uh, he's one guy, he's a warrior, he plays, he leaves his. Uh, Leaves everything he has out there. Uh, there's nobody that felt more worse about dropping that pass against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers than Joe Horn. And mm-hmm. well, uh, I, I just think I really think he was in a good mood. He was feeling good about himself, feeling good about the team's chances, and thought, "Hey, why not national TV? Let's do it." Well, I, I think the one issue is going to be this: is that um, the fact that he brought on a foreign object, which which, uh, which the uh, referees did would eventually throw a flag for. Drew the ire of Jim Haslett, and Haslett got on his case royally about the machine gun dance uh-huh. going to Atlanta. And I basically think that this makes me wonder a little bit about where the focus might be leading into games because if one of your concerns, not your total concern, but one of your concerns is going out there and planting a cell phone under, under the goalpost padding, it kind of makes me wonder slightly where that maybe this is an indication of what's been a problem this year with the Saints is that some players – Leading into game day, mm-hmm. they maybe haven't had all of their focus in the right place. I mean, Dale Carter gets put on IR partially because of, a, of his uh, quad injury, but also because on the bus going to the Eagles game, he wants to play craps. Yeah. So I, I think there's just been just enough minor problems on this team that's led to them being very erratic and, frankly, being an average, hence 7-17. Seven and 17. Obviously, this is not all Joel Horn's fault, but it just makes me wonder slightly – if uh, some of the players uh, do this just to rub Hazlitt the wrong way. 1-800-673-5555 is our number. Talking with our resident Saints expert, William Taylor, down in Thibodeau. My thing is this, also on this, um, you know, certain players in the NFL are just going to beat to their own drum. You know, Terrell Owens, I don't care what kind of coach you have. He's going to go, he's going to do what he wants to do. And I think Joe Horn regardless of who the coach is go- who the coach is he's going to do what he wants to do when it comes to these things i think both of those guys feel for whatever reason that uh they they have the the right to do this you know mm-hmm. to, to to have these type of touchdown celebrations or premeditated thoughts mm-hmm. you know i i don't know if it you know i don't know if this you know this particular instance is a reflection on the coaching staff of jim Hazlitt. that's because Joe Horn is going to do what Joe Horn wants to do. Terrell Owens is going to do what he wants to do. He doesn't care who's the head coach. It may be Steve Mariucci. It may be Dennis Erickson. He's going to go out and do what he wants to do. And there's just some players on your team, regardless of who the head coach is, that's going to beat to their own drum. Yeah, and in some cases, the players can still make their team successful. Yeah. The only question is, where do you draw the line where one guy's selfishness hurts the team? Obviously, any time you get an unsportsmanlike penalty or a personal foul, uh, it's going to hurt the team. For example, we're focusing on Joe Horn, but at another point in the game in the first half, Charles Grant got an unsportsmanlike for getting into a fight with a giant lineman. Mm-hmm. And that could have hurt the team easily because it gave the Giants some yardage. I'm not sure if that was the drive where they scored their only touchdown. It is, I believe, yeah. Okay, so. Because it happened, it would have set up a third and something, and I think it gave them first and goal. Right. So and Hasler took Grant right out, right, right. away. So that, that could have hurt the team just as easily. It's just that the Joe Horn thing was off of a positive, not off yeah. a negative. So, uh, yeah. So, you know, but isn't it funny? Here me and some other people have criticized Aaron Brooks this year for playing somewhat erratic. Sunday night, 
as likely his best game of his career, mm -hmm. five touchdown passes in one night to become be on second all-time on the Saints list for most TD passes in a game. Billy Kilmer has six. And uh, like I said, an incredible night for him as a quarterback. And all we're talking about is a cell phone. Well, we could talk a little bit about Aaron Brooks after we get out of the break. Gotcha. 1-800-673-5555. Let's hear what you have to think, either on Joe Hort or Aaron Brooks. I mean, he did play pretty well. I thought he was going to have a good game. I really did, just because of what happened against Tampa Bay. And I think Brooks showed a little bit of heart, which is a good sign. We'll be back after this on Louisiana Live. You can only find gifts like these on the Holiday Gift Network. Girl, get you can get caught watching TV at work. It's home. the Holiday Let's Gift Network. I'm over. trying to find the perfect oh, gift for Mr. Ross. It's a voice-activated hammer. Just say, hammer, and it takes off. Whoa, look out. Look out, Charlie. Hey, maybe that's not it. What do you get in the box? How about a chance to win up to $50,000? $50,000? Where are you going to find a gift Whoa. like that? At any Louisiana lottery retailer. Ask for the Holiday Scratch-Off. Introducing the Holiday Scratch-Offs from the Louisiana Lottery. Cool winning, Holly 100 Stripler and Holiday Cash. You could win up to $100, $10,000, or even $50,000. And with cool winning, 70% of your money comes back in prizes. Pick up all three at your lottery retailer today. Great holiday gift. And what man wouldn't want this remote control lawnmower? Just hit this button and... How do you make it turn? Watch out, the cable! I think I'll try the lottery holiday scratch-off. Ask for cool winning, Holly 100 Stripler and Holiday Cash today. Must be at least 21 to purchase. Season's greetings from the administration, faculty, and staff of the LSU Ag Center. Our experts have advice to make your holidays happy and less stressful. Whether you are looking for information on caring for a tree, cooking the perfect holiday meal, or saving money in the new year, you can find it here. Visit www.lsuagcenter.com or contact your local extension office to get the advice you need. Radio Ovaltine's on the air with the Ovaltine song. Ovaltine hot, kids like it a lot. Red chocolate Ovaltine, it hits the spot. Creamy and delicious, may I say nutritious, Taste just like dessert. Now, Jason, it's time to jump. Ovaltine hot, kids like it a lot. Rich chocolate Ovaltine hits the spot, man. Creamy and delicious, and may I say nutritious, it tastes just like dessert. Rayo Ovaltine signing off. Later. And welcome back to Louisiana Live, 1-800-673-5555. Talking to our resident Saints expert, William Taylor. Tennessee Titans are in a little bit of trouble. Backup quarterback Billy Volek is out for the season with a lacerated spleen. He was injured in Sunday's win over Buffalo. Volek was making his first start of the season in place of an injured quarterback, Steve McNair. Also tonight, the New Orleans Bowl, the third annual New Orleans Bowl, and that features North Texas against Memphis, the start of 28 bowl games that will take place over the next couple weeks. But getting back to the New Orleans Saints, Aaron Brooks, a career night in Sunday's win over the New York Giants, 45-7, to and he throws five touchdown passes against the Giants. And I really thought, William, going into that game, he was going to have a good game because he took a lot of heat in the Tampa. Uh, Jim Hazlitt for one of the one of and maybe one of the few times he has ever publicly criticized his quarterback, uh, came out and did that. And, and I thought Brooks going up against the New York Giants secondary, which featured a bunch of no-names, that, uh, you know what, this might be his night. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and it turned out to be huge. I mean, 26 of, 39, excuse me, 26 of 35, 296 yards passing, five touchdown passes on the night, four of which to Joe Horn. Uh, you know, it turned out to be an incredible game for him. And, and this is something... Uh, well, the, the earlier game at Atlanta was pretty good for him as well. But right. When you count both sides of the ball, it was just a dominating night for the Saints. You know, because uh, I was really worried, even though they, uh, the Giants had a rookie quarterback in uh, Jesse Palmer, uh, which, by the way, I believe they said he's the first Canadian born and bred to start as a quarterback in the NFL, uh -huh. is that, uh, you know, this surprised me. I was really amazed how well they worked, and yet – the incredible part about Aaron Brooks' night, it probably would not have happened if Terrell Smith didn't have to go to the dentist the previous night. Uh, here's Terrell Smith, the starting fullback, who uh, I believe, as it was told, less than uh, 90 minutes before a kickoff, Terrell couldn't go because of an infected jaw. 
And so they basically had to rewrite the entire game plan in 90 minutes. He admitted some of the plays they ran that night they hadn't run in a month or two. Right. So they, and hence, that's why Deuce McAllister had to become more of a receiving back. He was uh, had eight receptions on the night for 65 yards. He did an okay job carrying the ball, 15 for 80 yards, and that was basically without a fullback. Mm-hmm. On occasion, uh, Boo Williams would line up back there as the fullback, but um, that led to Aaron Brooks just taking off like crazy. Did a good job of mixing up the receivers. Besides Horner McAllister, you had Boo Williams with five receptions, Jerome Payton with three and a touchdown. And, surprise, the same day we find Saddam Hussein, we find Dante <laughs> Stallworth in a uniform. Um, two catches for 23 yards, and, heck, even Lamar Smith got a catch. So it was a bountiful night for everybody, and Stallworth, all jokes aside, seemed to be pretty well from uh, the ankle injury or, or a hamstring injury, whichever it was, or the injury of the week, maybe. I don't know. And, uh, and heck, Brooks just did a, a good job mixing it up. And uh, the touchdown, like I said, those touchdown passes were great. And, hey, to open up the game with, what, a 50-yard touchdown reception right. was uh, was absolutely a, a great way to really fire up everybody in the Superdome that night. And in addition to 20 ninth straight sellouts, so it was a win-win for everybody. Now, granted, this all took place against New York Giants. Uh, Giants front seven is not too bad, but their secondary, I was looking at some of the – they're starting secondary. I never heard of the half of these guys. That I never heard of any of them, in fact, until Sunday night. Uh, so the, the Saints are picking on a secondary that's, uh, you know, just a bunch of free agents out there trying to, trying to at least make an impression on somebody or guys that have been around the block, have career backups, whatever it may be. But I think a couple things are interesting. One, I, I really thought Dante Stallworth, even though he had two catches and a couple of drops, he still gives defenses something to worry about because of his speed and his physical ability, and he was able to kind of spread things out and open some room for a Aaron, for a Joe Horn, for a Jerome Payton, a Deuce McAllister coming out of the backfield. Also, uh, you mentioned it, Terrell Smith, the fullback, is out, so they don't have a fullback, so they got to go more to a passing-oriented attack and they open up the, the playbook a little bit more, and, and I'm sitting there watching this, William, and I'm saying, well, where was this the first 12, 13 weeks of the season? This is the Saints that I thought we were going to see. Yeah. I, they, I mean, before he answered it, I think the Saints kind of, I don't know, I don't know. You know, this kind of maybe opened something up for him. Well, you know, it's kind of an example about sometimes uh, you just don't know who to blame. When things aren't going well, you know, do you, you know it, it's the players because of injury or maybe they're not uh, emotionally up for a game? Is it the coaches not running the uh, the system that benefits the players' attributes? It's uh, There's a lot of strange things about this football t- uh, team this year. I still think chemistry's got a lot to do with it. But you're right, it was almost like improv, like yeah. old-fashioned fire horse football, firehouse football, and uh, it seemed to work well with all these players' uh, athletic ability on, on the offensive side of the ball. All right, we'll be back with more Louisiana Live, 1-800-673-5550. Leaves you needing a vacation. Why not change the pace with a fun-filled trip to historic Mobile, the South City by the Bay, and turn your holiday season vacation into a holiday season vacation. For families throughout the Southeast, the opening of Bellingrath Gardens and Homes Magic Christmas and Lights marks the beginning of the holiday season. Imagine the brilliance of three million twinkling lights illuminating the beautiful floral splendor of the gardens. Experience the Nutcracker, Candyland, and much more. No Mobile Holiday Vacation is complete without a visit to America's battleship, the USS Alabama. And don't miss fascinating exhibits like Friends in the Americas at the Museum of Mobile and Coming Home, Great American Art from 1930 to 1950 at the Mobile Museum of Art. Plan this holiday season to take a holiday vacation. Visit historic Mobile, the South City by the Bay. Call 1-800-5-MOBILE. That's 1-800-5-MOBILE. Or log on to mobile.org for information. I'm Todd Dunn, and this is news on the Louisiana Network. Now that U.S. Senator John Bro has announced he won't run for re-election, talk of who might replace him has already gotten hot. LN's Jeff Palermo reports. Pollster Ed Redwick of Loyola University conducted a poll earlier this month and had respondents choose between four candidates if Bro did not run. The winner was Attorney General Richard Ayoub. I think Ayoub probably came out on top of it among those because he just uh, uh, was in an election. Redwick says the other candidates to choose from were Elections Commissioner Suzanne Hyde-Terrell and Congressman 
David Vitter and Chris John. But Redwick says more candidates are expected, which means one thing. Looks like another long-fought, close contest. I'm Jeff Palermo reporting. The Dow soared 106 points today. The Nasdaq rose 6. The S&P 500 gained 7 points. This is news on the Louisiana Network. And welcome back to Louisiana Live. 1-800-673-5555 is the number. Hornets lost last night. They took one on the chin to the Los Angeles Clippers. And, of course, tonight, over at the Maravich Assembly Center, the LSU men's basketball team, they returned from a long break to take on Rick Majerus and Utah. That game can be seen on ESPN at 8 o'clock. Tomorrow we'll talk with Kent Lowe, recap tonight's game. Kent Lowe is a sports information director over at LSU, and he is the head sports information director for basketball. But back to what happened on the football field Sunday. The Saints, an impressive performance, 45-7 to over the New York Giants. Let's face it, the Saints outmanned the Giants. Boy, if you thought the Saints had troubles, that New York team, that was, uh, that was a pretty pitiful uh, performance. I'm almost surprised, William, as we're talking with our resident Saints expert, William Taylor, I'm almost surprised that I didn't hear Jim Fossil's name or didn't hear about Jim Fossil getting fired on Monday. Yeah, very much so. I mean, you know, I think basically probably Giants ownership is content just to let the season pan out yeah. and just let it be with that. Uh, you know, it is unfortunate. Here's a man who went to the Super Bowl with his Giants just three years ago and a loss to Baltimore, and all of a sudden, mainly through a good bit of injuries, yeah. has just tanked it. And it's really sad that uh, he's probably, like I said, going to be gone after this year, even though he'll still have a year left on his contract. And you could tell the frustration with him as the game went along. Michael Strahan as well, because, heck, in that game, Victor Riley did a real number on Michael Strahan. Mm -hmm. When just two years ago, Kyle Turley had fits of Michael Strahan. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty sad time to be in New York, but I'm sure down the road they will uh, rebound from him. You know, Kerry Collins is hurt. And Jeremy Shockey is out, so uh, that's two of their big offensive weapons right there. And let's face it, even the best of coaches can't do a lot necessarily with backup talent. So uh, it's still a game of players. You've got to have healthy players. And, yeah, it's going to be rough for the Giants and uh, be real interesting to see who they bring in next year. You know, isn't it kind of interesting, the, uh, I guess, two big events that have happened with Saints and 15-yard penalties have happened on Sunday night and against teams from New York. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, I'm referring to the uh, Kyle Turley situation with the New York Jets on a Sunday night game on ESPN where uh, he almost decapitates a Jets player, or actually a Jets player, and the name slips me, if you can help Damian me. Damian Robinson. Damian Robinson almost decapitates uh, or takes off Aaron Brooks' head. And so what does Kyle Turley do? Rip off uh, Robinson's helmet and fling it, you know, up in the air. Which situation do you think, I guess, which situation was worse? Kyle Turley throwing the helmet or Joe Horn's celebration after oh, a touchdown? By, by far, the Turley situation was worse, but not because of Kyle Turley. What ticked me off, I understood his frustration, though maybe throwing the helmet across the field was unnecessary. What ticked me off about that night was that uh, Damian Robinson didn't get ejected from the game for mm -hmm. trying to break Aaron Brooks' neck. Yeah. That, that, and as much as I like Mike Carey as a referee and his crew, they really dropped the ball on that because that situation was totally all uncalled for that night. And uh, that really bothered me more than Turley getting kicked out of the game. And sure, the 15-yard penalty that followed put the Saints out of really close uh, range for getting a touchdown and possibly tying the game. But uh, when Robinson didn't get kicked out, that, that really irritated me about that night. But sadly, uh, Cal Turley throwing the helmet, that just really led to um, – the collapse. Well, the collapse in the sense that, uh, and this was I was told by one source, that what was unfortunate was that Kyle Turley felt that Aaron Brooks nor Jim Haslett appreciated him trying to save Brooks's career. Uh -huh. And really that's why the rest of 01 and a lot of 02 had a lot of friction is because Kyle Turley just thought certain members of his own team didn't appreciate him, and hence uh, he publicly lambasted the Saints and, right. uh, and got sent off to the Rams. How ironic, by the way, I don't know if you heard about this, a few hours before he got traded to the Rams, a reporter asked him if he had any interest of playing for Mike, M Mike Martz, and he said absolutely not. Uh -huh. 
Well, that's interesting. And we know that he didn't like Mike Martz. No, he didn't. No. But, so, hey, he needed a job and needed a new signing bonus. And I saw him on ESPN as well uh, defending Mark Bulger, who's taking a lot of heat in St. Louis for the amount of turnovers he's committed up there. But you remember that Kyle Turley situation. Jim Hazlitt's first thought, and he said it, mm -hmm. I think, the next day after that happened, was my first thought was to cut him. Yeah, and, and I think that's what upset Turley more than anything. And um, – I can understand Hazlitt feeling that way, don't get me wrong, because any time a player does something that outrageous in the game, you probably want to kick him in the rear end. But, uh, yeah, sadly, I think those comments is what led to Turley feeling he wasn't appreciated anymore. And uh, though what, what really ticked me off was uh, after he w went to the Rams, he did an article, I think, with NFL.com, mm -hmm. and he said uh, Thibodeau, Nickel State Training Camp in Thibodeau, Louisiana, was the crap pot of the world. Oh, yeah. I'm cleaning up the language, by the way. <laughs> said something else. But uh, oh, by the way, in the next segment, I'm going to tell people who Joe Horn really called on the cell phone. Okay. I ran my inside investigation, and I've told some people by email. That's why our audience, by the way, is so large today. All right. I think people in Petal, Mississippi, are even picking us up. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll go into that a little bit later. But it was a uh, yeah, that was one heck of a memorable night. And uh, But yet, I, I will give Joe Horn credit. Uh, his, his little display was a hell of a lot more positive than two years ago. Yeah, it definitely was. And like I say, I, I don't, you know, other than bringing a cell phone on the field, I don't see it a big harm. Do, do you think uh, that he was showing up the Giants? I don't get that feeling. No, no. I, I, I think he's just having a good time. No, and, and I think he wants attention, uh, which can be a good thing. But uh, Joe Horn loves attention. He's been that way on and off throughout his Saints career because, let's face it, in Kansas City and when he was with the, uh, the Memphis Mad Dogs in the CFL, he really didn't get a lot of notoriety. In New Orleans, you know, he got on at a good time, uh, can't get enough of the spotlight, and uh, he'll take that spotlight any chance he gets and uh, got a lot of free publicity off of this. And I'm sure he'll get more from other national outlets. And we said on the phone earlier, uh, I'm gonna, we ought to start a football pool to see which wireless company is going to sign Joe Horn first. be real interesting how that pans out. Well, yesterday on Dan uh, Patrick with ESPN during his interview, he, he said he wasn't doing it for um, an endorsement deal. but it, And I actually believe him, but there's no doubt that somebody is going to be coming and calling, <laughs> maybe even on his cell phone, uh, looking to see if he can – if he would endorse their products. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, it'll be interesting also to see if Michael Lewis will get fired. Yeah, because he, he helped dig out the cell phone. And it actually surprised me more. Michael Lewis was involved with a prearranged celebration. Uh, he was part of the machine gun dance earlier this year. And, by the way, for our friends in Baton Rouge, uh, last year when Michael Lewis scored the uh, two touchdowns and returns against Washington, yeah. he did what was called the Nest T plunge after those uh, TDs. Because five years ago when he was with the Bayou Beast in the IPFL, uh, the team that Buford Jordan coached to a championship, all the receivers, that was their celebration dance with the Nest Plunge. Okay. And so that's where, that's the origin of, of Michael Lewis's first celebration came from. But, yeah, it did surprise me Lewis was involved with that. And uh, you know what I was surprised to read in the different newspapers that there's even some speculation the league may actually try to suspend Joe Horn. I think that would be going way overboard. Yeah. Uh, a fine, sure, but suspension? Eh, yeah. I mean, I don't think I'd want to make Joe Horn an example out of Well, that. they didn't suspend Kyle Turley, did they? I don't remember. No, uh, no, 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 they didn't. They fined him. And they, he had to go to, mad, you know, how classes on how not to be mad. <laughs> well, I, I found Kyle Turley said later that he did go. Yeah. Actually, I think it was to a trained psychologist. Right. But basically, he just, they just went for a couple of sessions. They basically talked for 50 minutes each session, and nothing really came out of it. It was, I mean, he did go, but it, you know, it, Kyle Turley's not going to change who he is for anybody. Right. You know, and I don't think, I have to give the man some credit. He's not a, a bad person. It's just that when he gets caught up in these games, sometimes he can get really outrageous. And, uh, you know, sometimes he's really got to be cool, cooled down when he gets that up-tempoed. Yeah. So, but, hey, I'll tell you what, if he's on your team, you know, he'll defend you to the hills. Just make sure you appreciate it. What do you think if Dante Stallworth did this? What do, you, what do you think if he pulled out that cell phone after the year he's had? Oh, there's no doubt in my mind. It'd be a totally different yeah. thing, that there would be a lot more negatives thrown at him than there were at Joe Horn because he's missed a lot of playing time that people kind of are suspicious about. Was he really as hurt as he claimed to be? So uh, I think if Stallworth did this, oh, there'd be a lot more negatives thrown at him than anything. 
Uh, but, hey, Joe Horn has got his skins on the wall, so he can get away with it more. 1-800-673-5555. When we come back, William will tell us who was Joe Horn calling on Sunday night after catching a second touchdown pass against the Giants. We'll be back with more Louisiana Live. Hi, this is Ricky Stockner for Louisiana's best on hold value, Sound Solutions. If your business relies on the telephone for new orders, customers' questions, or support, you need whole time marketing from Sound Solutions. Whole time marketing will keep your callers on the line while telling them about your company. With whole time marketing from Sound Solutions, your callers may hear about a product or service they didn't know you offered. That'll increase your sales. Best of all, Sound Solutions has plans to fit any budget. So give us a call now at 1-888-312-5200. There has never been a better time to enjoy all of the benefits On Hold Marketing delivers than right now during Sound Solutions' 10th anniversary. And with Sound Solutions, there are no contracts to sign. We prove ourselves with every production. So call Sound Solutions now at 888-312-5200. Or visit us on the web at www.soundsolution.com. Ever feel like your vacation leaves you needing a vacation? Why not change the pace with a fun-filled trip to historic Mobile, the South City by the Bay, and turn your holiday season vacation into a holiday season vacation. For families throughout the Southeast, the opening of Bellingrath Gardens and Homes Magic Christmas and Lights marks the beginning of the holiday season. Imagine the brilliance of three million twinkling lights illuminating the beautiful floral splendor of the gardens. Experience the Nutcracker, Candyland, and much more. No Mobile holiday vacation is complete without a visit to America's battleship, the USS Alabama. And don't miss fascinating exhibits like France in the Americas at the Museum of Mobile and Coming Home, Great American Art from 1930 to 1950 at the Mobile Museum of Art. Plan this holiday season to take a holiday vacation. Visit historic Mobile, the South City by the Bay. Call 1-800-5-MOBILE. That's 1-800-5-MOBILE. Or log on to mobile.org for information. And welcome back to Louisiana Live, 1-800-673-5555. Our guest on every Tuesday is our resident Saints expert, William Taylor. William, you say you know who Joe Horn was calling after he caught that second touchdown pass. Yes, now this might take three minutes. Okay, go ahead. you it's got three minutes. Of, it's part of a huge conspiracy. According to top secret sources, the person who Joe Horn called in his famous cell phone celebration during the Giants game, now ready for this? was none other than General Skandar Akbar. That's what I heard. Yes, I know how much in shock you are right now, but apparently this is part of the reason why the Saints have played so erratically this season. Mm -hmm. There was some kind of secret deal made before the season started where Skandar Akbar told Joe Horn he would pay him an enormous sum of money if he could make the Saints a struggling average team. The purpose for the season to be erratic and not an outright losing season was Akbar figured an up-and-down season would be more stressful on owner Tom Benson than accepting early failure. Hence, Akbar felt the stress in this situation would be so negatively affecting Benson that he would sell the team not to his granddaughter, but to someone not in the family out of respect to the stressful impact it could have on his loved ones. I see. Okay, now at that point, Akbar would contact Benson immediately, buy the Saints with all his money from donations funneled through the Palestine Liberation Organization, and clean house immediately. Those changes would include naming as the new general manager the one-man gang with directors of personnel off on Sika the Big Samoans, and by the way, the Iron Sheik would be executive assistant to the new owner. Joe Horn would also be guaranteed a starting job for the rest of his career in New Orleans, along with frequent appearances on Soul Train, but only if the show is sponsored by cell phone wireless phones. I see. So that is the real reason why Joe Horn was calling General Skandar Akbar, and I've told the dirty secret to everybody, and I don't care. <laughs> so it wasn't to his kids uh, who were watching the game back at home. No, but he does love them and his mother very much. Yeah. But that was a diversion, and we can't accept this, so we have to stop <laughs> Akbar from buying the team from next year. Well, anyway, <laughs> all right. Uh, it's interesting take, uh, interesting uh, philosophy uh, on why maybe the Saints have been erratic this year, as you mentioned. Well, you thought that was something. Wait till the next segment. I have even bigger news. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, seven and seven, the New Orleans Saints are right now. They need a little help if they want to get in the playoffs. They need the Giants <laughs> to beat Dallas, which uh, 
Well, I saw that. I saw the Giants play Sunday night, William. They're not very good, and right. uh, they need Arizona to beat Seattle. Correct? Uh, that sounds right. In fact, as as we talk, I have my notes with me on the here it is NFC situation right now. Uh-huh. Okay, as we speak on a serious note. In the NFC, the way to po- the playoff set up are right now, Philadelphia is the number one seed, St. Louis number two, Carolina three, Green Bay fourth. Now Dallas would be the fifth seed or the first wild card. Minnesota, who started 6-0, and mm-hmm. now down to 8-6, and six, would be the, t- the sixth seed or the second wild card. Uh, in seventh place is Seattle, and New Orleans is in eighth place. So right now the Saints fans have to really hope that uh, Seattle is going to lose their next two Right. In order for the Saints to have any chance to get in, because since Seattle beat New Orleans in week one, if they finish with the same record, head-to-head goes to Seattle. So Seattle imperatively has to lose their next two, and the Saints have to win their next two to hopefully get in with some help, of course, like we said, from Dallas. Right. So actually the Giants. They need the Giants to beat Dallas. Oh, the Giants to beat Dallas. Right. And and I I guess you would need Kansas City to beat Minnesota. Uh, Yeah, that would definitely help. And which I think will happen. But oh uh, yeah, (laughs) which which. uh, But still, it's a long shot. But you know what? The Saints could finish William at nine and seven, winners of three in a row in a month where they have struggled. What does that mean for Jim Haslett's future? Um, I I think it may not be too good. I know we've had this discussion weeks before, um, and I think uh, obviously there's a better chance he's going to stay here if he if he goes nine and seven. But in my personal opinion, Mm -hmm. because the team has had such a terrible record in December and had opportunities in the playoffs last year but couldn't quite squeak right. out one win in the last three games, that uh, I personally think they would be better off releasing him and I, because I think there's a respectable ch- chance another team would pick him up as head coach. Mm-hmm. Now, that may not be uh, realistic uh, because of the length of his contract, and we've been through all that already. So I think uh, if they finish with a losing season, I think you'd almost have to let him go. But uh, I think there's a decent chance he will stay with a nine if they can sweep the table. So we'll just have to wait and see. You know, it's kind of hard to tell because Jacksonville, for a team I think has only won, what, four games, uh, they haven't been that bad. And they've played well at home. They're four and three at home, actually. And they really did a good job against, well, what's basically a struggling Tampa Bay game on Sunday night football. Leftwich has proven himself to be a good quarterback Mm -hmm. in replacing the injured Mark Brunel. So uh, I think this is going to be a lot more interesting contest than people might first think. I think it's going to be an interesting game for Aaron Brooks. I mean, we saw the fantastic performance on Sunday night. Can he back it up with another good one? I, I'm not expecting him to go out and throw five touchdowns against Jacksonville, but let, let's see a little bit of consistency. I think that's what Saints fans are hoping for from Aaron Brooks. Yeah, I mean, he, like I said, uh, I can say this till I'm blue in the face, but he's got all the athletic ability in the world to be uh, to bring somebody to the postseason. It's just that it just seems like emotionally he's just been rather e- erratic, and that has translated to some not so good performances, including, of course, the 13, not now 14 fumbles, 11 lost on the season, which, by the way, is also a Saints record for mm-hmm. one season. Yet, isn't it ironic in a season he's fumbled so much, he has the NFL lead in lowest interception percentage, something like 1.8%. So uh, in one regard, he's been great, but in another regard, he's been terrible. Uh, That's almost a microcosm for his career here. And uh, if he's on the right track like he was when he got thrown into the Lions then in 2000, he can do a world of good. And in a sense, uh, assuming the coaches don't change the the system radically, I think it's all in his hands. His passer, passer efficiency rating now ranks third in the NFC. You know what play really impressed me the most uh, from Sunday night's game? It's not the five touchdown passes he threw or the, the tremendous catch by Jerome Payton in the end zone. It was the one time where he scrambled and he picked up, I guess, 10 or 11 yards or something like that. But it's the first time in a long time I saw Brooks put his head down to get a couple of yards. And that's what I'm saying. I think he was really motivated with what happened after the Tampa, gay, Tampa Bay game and the criticism he took afterwards. Right. And uh, he's, um, I think this go-around, especially the way Hazlitt talked about him on the Monday radio show after the Tampa game, I think it really fired him up in the right manner to, to, to you know, to risk his body, take some chances for a change. And, uh, heck, it proved worthwhile in that lopsided win, and a lot of people rallied around him. 
1-800-673-5555. We have one more segment from William Taylor. you got another secret to, to launch on us, right, William? All right, we'll be back with more Louisiana Live. You're listening to uh, many great stations across the state. You can only find gifts like these on the Holiday Gift Network. Girl, you can get caught watching TV at work. It's call. the Holiday Let's Gift Network. I'm trying to find the perfect oh, gift for Mr. Ross. It's a voice-activated hammer. Just say, hammer, and it takes off. Whoa, look out. It's a duck, Charlie. Hey, maybe that's not it. What do you get in the box? How about a chance to win up to $50,000? $50,000? Where are you going to find a gift like that? At any Louisiana lottery retailer. Ask for the holiday scratch-off. Introducing the holiday scratch-offs from the Louisiana lottery. Cool winning. Holly 100 Stripler and Holiday Cash. You could win up to $100, $10,000, or even $50,000. And with cool winning, 70% of your money comes back in prizes. Pick up all three at your lottery retailer today. Great holiday gifts. And what man wouldn't want this remote control lawnmower? Just hit this button and... How do you make it turn? Watch out, the cable! I think I'll try the lottery holiday scratch-off. Ask for cool winnings, Holly 100 Stripler and Holiday Cash today. Must be at least 21 to purchase. You can supplement your income. You can supplement your diet. Why not supplement your health? Your health insurance, that is. Medical expenses can take a big bite out of your pocket. That's why it's important to have health insurance you can count on. Your local State Farm agent can help you put together a health insurance program that's right for you. Whether it's protection against the unexpected or funds to meet the extra expenses that pile up, depend on Louisiana State Farm agents for all of your health insurance needs. Mon ami, my petite flower. Oui, Gaspard. We must have a marvelous banquet. Oh, oui. Gaspar. The fruit of the sea. Whatever you wish. Premium Louisiana oysters. Oui, oui, oh oui. Only the best for you, my girl. Light up your love life with Louisiana oysters this holiday season. For recipes, go to www.louisianaoysters.org. Bon appétit. <laughs> All right, one more segment of Louisiana Live, 1-800-673-5555. If you have a quick thought, talking with our resident Saints expert, William Taylor. William, you got one more secret to let us know about, right? That's right. In case you haven't heard, and I want all the listeners to keep this a secret, all ten of them, but anyway, uh, that uh, in, case, in case you haven't heard already, that the uh, Saints stations are going to start a new public service campaign. That believe it or not, they actually want to try to get rid of the emergency 911 system. Uh -huh. The reason why is none of them can find the 11 button on the dial. <laughs> so there, there's All the, right. the secret. All right, that, that's pretty good. I All guess. right. <laughs> well, the way the season's gone, we gotta laugh before we cry. Yeah, and I think that's what Joe Horn was trying to do on Sunday night. But let's look ahead to uh, this Sunday against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, what do you think? You, you think the Saints can make it two in a row? I hope so, and, I, and my answer is going to be yes. I think um, I, I think this team by now, if they don't have urgency, they won't have it. And uh -huh. I mean, every win is important, even though the playoffs are now out of their hands completely, if not totally unlikely, though mathematically still in there. You know, I think what they need to do is just keep on playing aggressively on defense. Charles Grant has done real well for himself, and uh, Ray, Darren Howard coming back from injury has you know been a, a real boost as well. You know, there's been a few disappointments along the way. Jonathan Sullivan maybe hasn't panned out to be the first-round pick that they hope, but there's always next year on that. The linebacking core, well, there definitely can be some improvement there. Darren Smith, is, is, his age is done adequately, but, you know, not not really up there like some other guys. Orlando Ruff showed steady improvement this season, and I guess Jacksonville, obviously, I think the key from where I stand is going to probably just try to stop the pass and mm -hmm. stop left, which... And, uh, you know, they can still do a lot, especially at home, as we mentioned earlier. And uh, who knows, maybe even field, since they do have grass over there, field conditions may come into effect. The uh, weather's supposed to be pretty dry the next few days. So if it's a nice dry track, I hate to sound like a horse race, but nice dry track, I think the Saints are going to do pretty well for themselves. And, uh, but, hey, we got Deuce back there who's proven himself to be a darn good pass receiver in addition to rusher. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I balance it all out, I think the Saints are going to do it probably by about eight. They need to get Terrell Smith back. I, I understand uh, Lamar Smith might not be playing, though. Uh, yeah, that I'm not sure about. Uh, you know, Terrell, you know, uh, he he will practice later yeah. this week. Lamar Smith, 
you know, is, is a decent backup. He's obviously getting long in the tooth and can't play every down. I don't know if they thought about plugging him at the fullback, but we'll see. So, But anyway, if that doesn't pan out, then uh, don't be surprised once again to see Boo Williams on occasion line up in the fullback slot and possibly Walter Rasby go into the tight end position. So they're going to mix it up a little bit, but uh, if they play this uh, fire, firehouse football yeah. like they did last week, hey, it'll be hard for Jacksonville to stop them. William, thanks a lot. As always, we'll talk to you again next Tuesday. All right. Well, everybody take care. All right. William Taylor, a resident Saints expert, joining us here on Louisiana Live. want to thank all the listeners for uh, listening to today's program. Tomorrow, we'll talk with Kent Lowe with the LSU Sports Information Department. He oversees the men's basketball team, and they got a game tonight at 8 o'clock against Utah. I got Utah winning that game just for the sole reason 16 days and then to finally play another game, have a 16-day break between games. That's tough to beat a team like Utah. But we'll find out at 8 o'clock tonight on ESPN. Thanks again, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Mon ami, ma petite flower. Oui, Gaspard. We must have a lover's banquet. Oh, oui, Gaspard. The fruit of the sea. Whatever you wish. Premium Louisiana oysters. Oui, oui. Oh, we oui. Only the best for you, my girl. Light up your love life with Louisiana Oysters this holiday season. For recipes, go to www.louisianaoysters.org. Bon appetit. You can supplement your income. You can supplement your diet. Why not supplement your health? Your health insurance, that is. Medical expenses can take a big bite out of your pocket. That's why it's important to have health insurance you can count on. Your local State Farm agent can help you put together a health insurance program that's right for you. Whether it's protection against the unexpected or funds to meet the extra expenses that pile up, depend on Louisiana State Farm agents for all of your health insurance needs. You can only find gifts like these on the Holiday Gift Network. Girl, Get you can get caught watching TV at work. It's all. the Holiday Let's Gift Network. I'm trying to find the perfect oh, gift for Mr. Ross. This. It's a voice-activated hammer. Just say, hammer, and it takes off. Whoa, look out. It's just a duck, Charlie. Hey, maybe that's not it. Hammer. What do you get in the box? How about a chance to win up to $50,000? $50,000? Where are you going to find a gift Whoa. like that? At any Louisiana lottery retailer. Ask for the Holiday Scratch-Off. Introducing the Holiday Scratch-Offs from the Louisiana Lottery. Cool winnings, Holly 100 Stripler, and Holiday Cash. You could win up to $100, $10,000, or even $50,000. And with cool winnings, 70% of your money comes back in prizes. Pick up all three at your lottery retailer today. Great holiday gifts. And what man wouldn't want this remote control lawnmower? Just hit this button and... Uh, how do you make it turn? Watch out for cables! I think I saw the lottery holiday scratch off. As for cool winnings, Holly 100 Stripler and Holiday Cash today. Must be at least 21 to purchase.